Okay. Thank you everyone for saying hello. I love seeing where you guys are from. We have people representing many states, so it's exciting to see. All right, let's kick it off everyone. Um, do want to mention up front, um, if you don't have a ListenWise account yet, please sign up for a free account on our website, listenwise.com. Um, you can also try out uh, our ListenWise premium product free for 30 days. Um, so I encourage you to start that free trial when you're signing up for your account. Oops. Okay. So just want to introduce our speakers before we get into all the exciting instructional strategies that we're going um, to share with you today. So my name's Erica Peterson. I'm on the customer success team here at ListenWise. Um, I've been with ListenWise for over four years. Um, and my main job is helping onboard new teachers, answer questions, build out training materials, and just generally help teachers make the most of ListenWise. Um, and then I'm also super excited to have Bonnie with us today. So Bonnie, if you want to say hello and let us know who you are, what you do. Yeah. Hi, I am Bonnie Nieves. I teach high school life science. Um, this year I teach anatomy, physiology, and biotechnology. So um, yeah, really interesting group of students I have. And I am excited to share how I use ListenWise with these unlikely candidate classes um, mm -hmm. in level science electives. Awesome. Wonderful. Okay. We're going to hear a lot more from you, Bonnie, um, down the road. So I'm excited to hear your stories. But first, let's just set the stage, talk about the agenda. Um, we're going to share instructional tips and strategies for integrating podcasts into your classroom this year. Um, and podcasts can help meet uh, multiple instructional goals, social emotional learning, content area instruction, and more. Um, and we're also going to show you how you can transition into a focus on content area instruction or establish weekly routines um, for skill development. And obviously, we're going to hear from Bonnie um, and one uh, story example she used to use with her students. And again, don't be shy. Put questions, comments, et cetera, into the chat box. We'll be answering those at the end of the session. Um, and you will also get the recording and um, other resources uh, via email after today's session, um, and as well as a toolkit um, to give you some additional instructional ideas as you start adding podcasts into your classroom this year. Okay, so ListenWise is really flexible. Um, it's an, a robust instructional uh, resource. It can be tailored to meet your needs. Um, and we find that teachers use ListenWise in so many different ways. So uh, an EL educator is going to use ListenWise differently than a high school science teacher, for example, um, or say an elementary librarian. Um, and that's the beauty of ListenWise. It's super flexible. Um, and you can meet multiple learning goals with one ListenWise story, thinking beyond just listening comprehension. Um, teachers love to engage students with the outside world with one of our current event stories um, or build background on a topic and connect to the curriculum, um, or you can practice vocabulary and academic language, um, and that's especially popular um, if you have English learners in your classrooms. Um, Bonnie, would love to hear from you. Um, how are you using podcasts um, uh, to support your learning goals, and what are the main learning goals you're looking at typically? So typically I, I use it for a couple of reasons, and it depends, of course, where in the, um, the cycle of the lesson I use it, but for one thing, I use it to evaluate students' prior knowledge or their background knowledge of something and to, so I can start to build upon that. But then other things are just their learning, I'm sorry, their listening comprehension because we spend so much time talking to students and expecting them to know what we're saying. It's amazing when I intentionally assess their listening comprehension, the, the amount of material that they're, they may be missing if it's only delivered um, through lecture. So it has helped to reshape the way I deliver content to students just across the board based on the information that I get back from it. Yeah, that's fascinating. And you forget, yeah, we don't explicitly teach listening, but it is the main source of how we absorb content and information. So that's an interesting insight. Yeah. Okay. 
So let's get uh, a little deeper into some of the ways uh, that you can use Listen Why. So you can use them to connect with your students, um, especially during these early months of the school year um, as you're building your community. Uh, we hear from educators um, that they're really focused on just nurturing relationships and trust with students over content and curriculum so far this year, especially this year. Um, so ways that uh, podcasts can help um, research and practical knowledge. Um, suggest that instructional materials and texts that reflect students' backgrounds and experiences are critical to engagement and really deep, meaningful learning. Um, therefore, we know that representation of different cultures and races and genders and just general experiences um, are important to learn um, about to build student engagement and foster inclusion and belonging in the classroom for your students. Um, and listen why stories, they feature real people sharing their real stories and experiences. So it's authentic uh, and engaging content uh, to begin with. Um, and student engagement is key to building a safe, positive school culture that increases achievement, fosters creativity and community, and decreases boredom, alienation, um, and dropout rates. And whole class listening or individual listening, which is flexible with ListenWise, um, it's a great way to start classroom discussions and help students make those personal connections um, to their learning. Um, and I think it's so powerful to hear someone's voice. Um, uh, it's so much easier, much so much easier to understand their perspective, feel that empathy, and make those personal connections when you actually can hear those people speaking at you in ways if you're reading a text, it just doesn't um, resonate the same way. Um, and when you listen to a really good story, it, you have what researchers call the immersed uh, experiencer view. Um, so it means that listeners feel like they are experiencing uh, that story that the person is telling. Um, and evidence does show that when listening, people's brains are stimulated um, and you're in the, like you're in the scene. Um, again, it's like your brain's making that movie, the sights, the emotions, the smells, um, all of those senses uh, come together. And listening has been proven to decrease our social anxiety um, and increases psychological safety. Um, and research shows that listening to a story, especially together out loud can really help build empathy. Um, SEL, social emotional learning, uh, is probably a top goal of yours, uh, as is many other teachers this year. So we've created a number of resources um, to support SEL. Um, so we have an SEL choice board, and I'm going to put that into the chat box for you guys right now. So you can find the link in the chat box. Um, so this choice board um, gives you different story examples um, to support the different um, uh, SEL competencies um, and just a jumping off point with some uh, questions. Um, so you can use these in a whole group setting uh, and engage your students. So again, link to that choice board is in the chat box. Um, and our lesson collections are another great, great place to find great stories to create those classroom discussions. Um, you could start, keep it simple, just having a quick turn and talk um, all the way uh, to having a whole class debate and really sinking your teeth into a topic. Um, and all listen why stories are great because they have built in comprehension and discussion questions. Um, so it's really easy to spark that academic discussion. Um, and when we share the slides out um, afterwards via email, um, you can hear from an educator on how she um, facilitates turn and talks with her students. It'll be included in the slide deck in a video. Okay. So next topic I wanna to talk about is how you can use ListenWise to support your curriculum and can connect to the content that you are teaching. So some sample ideas here. Okay, so the first step uh, when setting up a listening lesson uh, are your goals. So what are the learning goals? Um, how are your students gonna actually listen to the story? Uh, how are you gonna structure it before, during, um, and after listening? Um, so Bonnie, again, would love to hear from you. Can you just quickly share how you um, generally set up your listening activities? Yeah, there's a couple of ways I do it. Sometimes I, I do use the group listening and then we debate. And then other times I do, I um, have students listen independently. That way they can slow down the audio or re-listen to the audio and um, like just choose how they interact with it. 
because especially when there are um, emerging bilinguals, it's they they sometimes feel pressured when you're listening as a whole class. So that really makes a difference in how I choose to do it. But um, yeah, it, it really depends on, on your goal. Either one of these is fabulous. I've had so much success with both. Again, setting it up as a debate. There are some wonderful mm -hmm. stories like about the K cups, which everyone knows K cups and everyone wonders where does the plastic go? Right. So there's just that is a really good way to get students talking about something that is not so much linked directly to academic content, but still it facilitates relationships among students. And then there are other things that are more content related that I like to have students listen to independently and make sure they're getting the background knowledge, typically it's background knowledge that I want them to have before we move forward with the lesson. Great, so when you have students listen independently, then you come together in class the next day, for instance, to discuss the content and how it relates. Yeah, or you know, we a warm up. Mm, okay. Yeah, and it's funny, I call them the the cool audio warm ups, and they're like, are we gonna do a cool audio warm up? Like, <laughs> yeah. Sure, even if I don't have one planned, if they ask for one, it's really easy to just pop into ListenWise and pull one out based on a, a search query. Oh, I love that. We're the cool listening. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Music to my ears. <laughs> awesome. Okay, thank you for sharing. We're going to go deeper into one of the stories you've used. But first, um, just want to talk about those before, during, after strategies, because I know um, teachers often have questions about how to actually set up a listening activity. So all of these activities are research-based, proven strategies, um, and they're especially great for English learners, um, but we know that teaching, good teaching for L's is great for all students. Um, so you can go as deep as you want, extend the lesson, do multiple of these activities. You could just choose to do one. So again, that's where it's really flexible, just depending on the needs of your students. Um, and how much time you have and, and what your learning goals are. So it's just a piece of the puzzle. Um, and then thinking about for learners at various levels, how can you scaffold the content before, during, after? So building background, um, letting them have the transcript and organizers and listening multiple times and slowing down the audio and then coming together after to discuss the content. So gonna go a little bit deeper on each of these um, uh, topics here. So before, you can always scaffold a listening activity um, using tools you already know and love. Um, so one idea is a KWL chart, um, or you could use ListenWise. Um, so all of our standards aligned lessons have teacher guides built in um, and has different ways to build background and introduce the story. So built in resources to help you um, teach that content. While listening, um, there are a plethora of note-taking strategies out there, but I do want to mention again that all of the ListenWise standards aligned lessons have accompanying listening organizers. So these can help students focus um, on important language and ideas and take notes um, and um, really help them understand that content. Um, so these can be printed off. Um, to have students do in class on paper, you can add them to ListenWise assignment. So again, depending on how you're listening, um, you can use it in flexible ways. And then after listening, um, so you can have students reflect on the story with a class discussion um, or maybe a writing prompt on the topic. Um, and ListenWise, um, Premium has auto-graded quizzes. So these are really fabulous assessment tool, plus the questions test specific listening skills. So then you get insight into how your students are listening um, at, across different skills like main idea, vocabulary, and inferencing, just to name a few of them. Okay, so now I'm going to let Bonnie share a specific story that she taught. Um, so I'm going to open up the story so we can take a peek at it. Um, so Bonnie, let us know why you picked this story, how it fit into the curriculum, um, how you taught it, and any learnings or best practices that you can share with teachers. I, I used this with freshmen in a biology class when we were talking, we we're beginning talking about evolution. And it's just... Who, what 
freshman in high school doesn't love woolly mammoths. So they were automatically engaged with it. So we, um, we set up the day before I use the uh, compare and contrast elephants and okay. woolly mammoths. And then we look at why um, we listen to the story and then we turn it into a discussion at the end about uh, what evidence do you have from this story that tells you why woolly mammoths may be extinct and why elephants are not. Mm -hmm. it, it really helps me to connect with students' prior knowledge and just to show them that there is some relevance to their background knowledge to what we're currently doing. And I know it, a lot of teachers, probably all teachers, their goal is to never have students ask, why do I need to know this? Or why am I learning this? So incorporating stories like this, where I've made the connection before they even listen, like you mm. know these things and now just apply it to what we're learning here. You've all seen elephants you are, have seen them in a book, so you know, and you're all familiar with a woolly mammoth, but why, why don't the two exist at the same time? So mm. this is a really good short story that they can use. It's two and a half minutes, but it leads to a whole class discussion, which is much richer than any textbook content that, like I, I can think of. And one thing that actually just occurred to me when you were talking about the listening organizer is how great that is for a metacognitive practice for students, because I, I have had students say, how did I miss that? Like, mm. is that really in there? I thought it was a good listener. Like, oh, well, see, it's practice. Just practice, you know, over time, we'll get, you will get better and they can see themselves getting better. And I can see them getting better with the, um, the data that comes out. And that's just fabulous. So um, I can't, yeah, I can't say enough great things about it. Do you want, is there anything targeted that you'd like me to say? Cause I could just ramble. No, no, I was just going to point out, you mentioned the, the organizers and I mentioned them. So just showing that you can find these organizers so it's specific to the stories. Um, again, you can print them off, do them in class. Um, you can always use your own generic organizers. Again, use the tools that you already know, um, but just use the content. Um, I'm curious, did you use these built-in questions to start your discussion or did it just naturally happen? The, um, the, we start with those questions, but there's always more. So mm. like, these are fabulous for if, there, if you have a group of students who may be hesitant to ask questions, then these are built in. So you can do that. And it's really difficult to have a conversation with students who don't ask questions or are afraid to be wrong. So having these here is super. To, and they're, they're always written in a way that gets students really engaged in a conversation. That I just love the way the questions are written also. Good. Yeah. Perfect. Really and then, oh, and then I just want to point out for people, if they're new to listen wise, um, that we do have built in transcripts. So I actually want to just take a quick listen to a part of the story so you can see it in action and just hear the content if you are newer to listen wise. So we'll just take a, a quick listen and you can watch that transcript. And we're covering everything this morning, including woolly mammoths who roamed the frozen tundra over 12,000 years ago during the last ice age. Their closest relative alive these days is the Asian elephant, which lives in warm tropical forests. NPR's Nell Greenfield Boyce reports that scientists have now compared the DNA of these two mighty beasts to try and figure out how woolly mammoths got to be so, well, woolly. The woolly mammoth had long, shaggy fur, a small tail and ears. Okay, so again, that just gives you a quick taste of what our story sound like. So it's usually multiple voices. Um, again, real people, it's not a robot talking at you. So it's just naturally engaging. Um, and then that transcript is there for students who do need it. Um, they can read as they listen. And within assignments on Listen Wise, you can always um, remove the transcript if you just want them focused on listening or customize it. Um, and I also want to mention that 
as a teacher in your LessonWise account, you can always just share your screen and everyone listens along. Um, and you can always individually share audio with students. We have this share audio button. So if you want them to do independent listening um, in a class setting, this is just a quick way to get the um, audio to your students if they're plugged in listening on their own. And I think we covered the basics of ListenWise. I did want to give a quick tour. Bonnie, any last thoughts or best practices on I this think tour? Something that I appreciate as a teacher is, of course, the Google integration and um, the way that the, the quizzes show up. So there are some that are auto graded, but if you ask open ended questions or you create questions, you can go through and add feedback for students as you're um, looking at the work that they've done. So um, being able to provide feedback to students or using the auto graded is mm -hmm. a really nice feature too. Yeah, and if you're unfamiliar with ListenWise quizzes, just wanna give you one quick example of what that looks like. I mentioned we test different listening skills. So it's a really great assessment piece and gaining insight into how your students listen. And then with the data, you can see how they improve throughout the year, um, as you mentioned, Bonnie. So this is just one quick sample of that. Okay, thank you for sharing um, about the woolly mammoths and your experience with that. It's always great to hear. Um, going back to the slides though, wanna just wrap up with this section with just a few other teacher examples. Um, and teacher story. So one strategy here is just a quick 10, 15 minute listen. It's a whole group listen. And this is really to help build background uh, on a curriculum topic. So related to what Bonnie was mentioning. Um, if you're an English teacher, we have a lot of podcasts that feature author interviews. Um, so that's a really great way to bring novels alive and directly connect um, to that novel you are um, teaching. Um, here's a story from a teacher who pairs listen why stories with a piece of text. Um, so this is a great way to just reinforce the content and help students make those connections in their daily lives. And again, the why are we learning about this? Because there's, you know, that direct uh, correlation and connection with the outside world. So really giving it meaning um, and making it personal. And then lastly, here's a social studies teacher, Laura Kroenke, actually, who is on the webinar today. Um, so sharing her experience about how she introduces new units and inquiry topics. Um, and podcasts can provide a wonderful new medium for students to engage with that content and really help them think more deeply on that topic as well. Okay, so last thing I wanna share with you here is establishing a weekly routine. That's a nice way to just bring podcasts uh, into the classroom without becoming too overwhelmed. Um, so listen wise, uh, our current events, we do weekly themes. Um, so we have on Mondays, we do weird news stories. So they're about 30 seconds, they're super short. They uh, have some vocab words. Um, so that's a really nice do now class warm up. really popular, especially with um, uh, EL teachers, um, and elementary students. Um, every Wednesday, we have a current event that also has one of those built-in listening quizzes. So that's a nice story. You can just always know it's there, plan for a Wednesday activity. That's a really nice 10, 15 minute independent activity for students. And then every Friday, it's debate Friday. Um, so it poses a question, gives both sides, um, and really great just actual class debates, class discussions, but you can work on writing skills, argumentative writing skills, um, the speaking skills with the class discussion. Um, so lots of different ways that you can take those activities as well. And debate stories are always focused on, you know, topics happening around the world at the time. So students are usually eager um, to jump in and engage with that content. Okay. So listen why stories, I don't think we've mentioned, but they are typically pretty short between three and five minutes. Um, so they're perfect for a class a warm up. Um, so Bonnie, I know you alluded to this, but I would just love to have you discuss a little bit more about um, how you choose your stories, which stories you use, um, and how you use that for the, the class warm up routine. So I use stories that will Usually I use ones that will create an unlikely connection to something kids already know, to something that I want them to learn. 
So there are just end, endless numbers of them. When I, when I go in and search for anything, I, I have multiple options of things. And there are actually times where I will um, split the class into two and have one group listen to one story, one group listen to another story, and then have them figure out how the two are connected to the thing that they're going to be learning. Oh, so cool. there, there's so many things you can do really that ListenWise is just an amazing tool and just having it the the two or to the two to four maybe five minute I don't think I've ever seen one that's five minutes long really short um, activities for students to listen to and it can kick off a whole entire class period of really engaged learners that want to know more about something that um, giving a reading passage just doesn't do the same thing. It doesn't mm -hmm. connect in the same way. Mm -hmm. In an unrelated way, but having students engage with it and it, you know, really gets into class discussion. There was one teacher who mentioned, we have a story about the best Halloween candy from years ago, but the teacher mentioned, um, you know, even later on in the day, kids were still discussing that it, just mm -hmm. in the hallways. Um, so that's just a fun, easy way. You know, it doesn't always have to connect to the curriculum. It can just be a fun story that gets students talking with each other. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Okay. Um, other things to think about with Listen Wise. Maybe you have unstructured time for learning. Um, could you start a Friday student inquiry time? You know, get creative. Uh, maybe ask your students how they want to use Listen Wise. Um, that's always an option. Um, and you can invite students to select different stories um, from their ListenWise accounts. If you have ListenWise Premium, students can also have accounts. Um, and I'm gonna put a link in the chat box here. Um, it is a blog post um, about structured choice examples and gives you some general organizers and activities if you wanna go that route. Um, some teachers like to put you know, podcast playlists together. So they pull out different ListenWise stories as you can see in this example, um, and then have students choose the ones that interest them. Um, and here's a great example for a teacher who has students do current event um, activities um, over the quarter, um, and then they come together at the end and they discuss as a class. So let's see, they choose 15 stories throughout that quarter, and then they have wonderful um, class discussions at the end of the corner about what they listen to and just generally what's going on in the world. So I love the idea of including current events into your routine just to get students um, involved and in thinking about the world around them. All right, a um, couple more resources and things to think about. I shared the SEL choice board way back when, um, but I'm gonna throw a couple more links into the chat box for you. So one is the page to all of the choice boards um, along with the SEL. Um, the instructional strategies, our implementation toolkit, that is what we will email to you, but wanna put that into the chat box if you're curious about that now. And then our support center, it's also a great place to go. We've revamped it this year, so it's more helpful than ever. Um, it has more instructional ideas, how to's, if you wanna learn more about listen wise and the nitty gritty details. All right, so I'm going to open it up for questions or any comments people have. I'll check out the chat box, um, but do want to remind you, um, if you don't have Listen Wise yet, go sign up for a teacher account. Um, and you can upgrade to premium for free for 30 days. You can even start a school trial if you want to share it with your colleagues and have everyone um, check it out as well. So let me go into the chat box here, but please ask questions or share your own experiences with ListenWise and what works well. I always say sharing is caring. Um, so let us know what you think. Um, will you get a copy of the slides? Yes, you will get an email after this with the recording um, and the slides. Yes, and I, okay, answer that one again. Perfect, perfect. Oh, the links. I'm sorry. I was sharing with the wrong group. Sorry, guys. I need to share with everyone. Technical difficulty. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, shoot. Zoom beat me on that one. Okay, just shared the um, structured choice activities blog post, as well as the choice boards, the toolkit, etc. 
And yes, yes the recording will be Resource available after. The resources, the support resources for teachers are so excellent here too, really. It's, it's so, it makes it so easy to just log it in and be able to use something right away. And if you're not sure how you'd be able to use podcasting, because at first uh, I was sold on the idea. I thought, oh yeah, listening comprehension. This was years ago. Think, listening comprehension, of course that's important, but how would I ever do that? And I just used the resources that were there and I felt really comfortable taking what was pre-created and using it with my class and then figuring out just ways to tweak it as I go for um, either individual students or particular sets of classes or activities or types of content. So it's just very, very rich. The supports there are very rich and easy to use. Good. And yeah, yeah, one of my biggest recommendations, if you're new to Listen Wise or don't know where to start, just find that good story. You know, something that's going to capture students' imaginations and engagement and just listen as a whole class. Just push play, use those built-in questions. And as Bonnie says, the questions keep coming after. So you just have to get them engaged and discussing and you'll be good. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see here. Ooh, I see a question um, from a math teacher asking if we have content for math. So we don't have a ton of content related to math. We don't have any standards curriculum line lessons built out for math, um, but we do have some um, stories related to numbers. We have planet money stories. So the economics angle, so that can tie potentially into what you're teaching, um, but not a ton of content for math, unfortunately. Most of our contents for social studies, science, and DLA. But we still have those current event stories. Um, so if you just want to, you know, do a good listen and again, you can make those connections that you might not initially think um, that can tie back to what you're teaching. Great Something question. Valuable that um, maybe is not um, a first priority consideration is when you get the information back from students, um, the results of their assessments that they take, you can use that information going into like a, a special ed meeting or a, a progress meeting, or even just speaking with parents about you know, their comprehension or the, um, their ability to analyze things, or are they, are they taking things? Um, hold on, let me just not try to make up words. I have it printed out right here because you can get a printed out report of your students. But, <laughs> You can look at, are they able to answer only the literal questions? How good are they at picking up on vocab, main ideas, a point of view, and summarizing? That's all laid out in the reports. So it's something concrete that you can take to progress report meetings too, which sometimes I know for myself as a science teacher, I, I used to say, I don't teach reading. I don't teach mm. comprehension, not directly. And I don't usually have any concrete data to take with me. So this really does give you some quick um, data points to take in. Oh, that's a great point. Um, and to that, with the data and the listening skills, and you can see strengths and weaknesses, um, you can use that data. And then you can, you know, if they struggle with inferencing, for example, you can just ask some inferencing questions yourself. So you can practice those skills. So you use that data um, and help inform your future instruction as well. Yeah. Let's see, I think, okay, we have a question about um, ESL um, and the levels for those students. So on ListenWise, I'll just give you a quick tour. We can open it up. Let's see here. You can always search for content and we do have it by grade level, but we also have a helpful measure with ListenWise Premium. Um, it's the measure of the audio difficulty. It's the Lexile audio measure. So that can help you figure out how difficult that content is for your students. Um, and choose the right content for them. And you can also filter by that as well. Or you can just use the general grade level um, option, but that's more curriculum alignment versus the actual audio content and the difficulty. Great question. Any other questions? No? Okay. Mm. 
student data. Yes, I'm happy to show you those again. And let me actually show you a different report. So you can look at individual quizzes you provide students, um, but we can also look at a whole class report. So this shows you all of the quiz data for that class, all of the questions they've answered across all the skills. So here are the eight um, that Listen Wise quizzes can test. So then this is where you can see they're doing well, literal and vocab for this example, but summarizing, analyzing evidence, this class is struggling a bit with that. So this is where you can see that high level data as well. Great question. The other thing that um, I use too is the amount of time students spend on something. So if they do very poorly on something and then you see, well, they only listened to it for like two minutes when they, you know, they, they didn't try to go back. So, you know, you can always gauge it that way. Like how much of a hurry were they in when they did it? If they didn't do it in class, there's, there's always that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all of our assignments have time spent. So you can see in the column how long they took and also see averages. So that's a helpful insight there as well. Good point. A question. Oh, student podcasting. I don't know if we have another one scheduled, Lisa, but I know we have recordings about it. So we can share those resources with you if you're interested, but they should be on our YouTube channel if you wanna check that out. We're always hosting those throughout the year because I know it's a very popular option. And that's another thing you guys can think about is actually podcasting with your students and making that, that a project for your students. So we'll have those webinars in the future for sure. Yeah, what a great way to model it too. Because as much as adults listen to podcasts really often, I think students are much more into Instagram reels and TikTok and Snapchat than they are podcasts. So modeling what a podcast, a good podcast <laughs> or cadence maybe would be as good. Mm -hmm. Mm, a question on the time spent. When does that time spent timer start? So time spent is as long as a student is open in the window and in the web browser, it's ticking away. So if they click out of it, then it will stop counting, I believe. And it also counts the time they listen. So it's just the whole activity time spent on the assignment page. And this came out, I believe last year is a update we made for distance and remote learning. Um, since you guys were not in the classroom with students, but I know it's still a really valuable feature. So I'm glad we have that there. Okay, any other questions? Doesn't look like it. Okay. There are no other questions. We'll wrap it up for today, but thank you all for joining. I hope you learned some new ways you can use Listen Wise and different routines and things to think about you may not have been using before if you have been using Listen Wise. And if you never use Listen Wise, I hope you learn more about it today. Again, sign up for an account if you don't have one, explore with your students, um, and you will get the recording in the slides after um, probably tomorrow via email. So keep an eye out for that. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Happy listening. Thanks, thanks everyone. Me. And thanks for thanks for sharing your thoughts and experiences, Bonnie. It was wonderful to hear. Yeah, I'm you're welcome. I I always feel like I'm 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 ranting I'm ranting just a little bit, but then I think, you know, because I am like in in the classroom every day with students, it uh, hopefully other teachers can relate for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Shared wonderful insights. And now I can think about new ways to share using Lesson Wise with other teachers. So yeah. love it. Sharing is caring, I always say. That's my theme. <laughs> awesome. All right. I think we'll end the Zoom meeting. I don't see any last questions. But thank you, everyone, again. And we will be in touch. Happy listening.